Right, so, um, this is where we were last time. And if we run that, yeah, then it's loading. We will see uh, what we have visually, which was just this. Um, now, hovers going is a pretty text, the background's not quite working, and obviously, we need some content. So, a few things to try and take off this tutorial. So, first thing we do is the hovers. So, we've got nav A, those are our links. So, if we want to stylize our nav A, but only when we put the mouse over it, we need a pseudo class, which is kind of like a, an extension class or something. So, nav A colon hover right make sure no space doesn't work I mean space doesn't work no space is what you want you can see that orange is clearly happy so we'll change the color uh, just to something simple and the other thing you could do would be like uh, a border and I can go I want it to be border two pixels Solid, and I'll put the same color. Right. This is a um, a kind of a standard condensed format. Um, so what you say is how wide the border is going to be, what type of border it is, and then obviously the color. You could use a hexadecimal color in there if you want to get a really specific shade. Um, and then here's a range of different ones, but you'd have to look them up because I can't remember half. It's virtually the only one I use. It's like dashed and dot. And set and a few other ones, but realistically, they don't really look that great, so hence I never use them. Um, right, so we'll save that, come back, refresh there. So now, when the mouse goes over, it's starting to feel like a website, and we can see all of them look pretty good. But this home one, the border's quite a lot wider, and as you see, when I hover over them, well, okay, this well, the best way to do it is to F12 and we'll see what's causing that. So in our nav, nav A, we can see this blue section here is currently um, what's it's filled up with and it says it's set at 100 and we'll see in our settings nav A width 100 so we set a width of 100 to keep them all kind of a uniform width but when you're doing something like this it's kind of showing up so if we were to untick that to kind of get rid of the code you can see it's brought it in closer because now the width is basically the width of how long the word is. So now as I hover over it, they're a lot more accurate and more tidy. Um, visually, there's not a huge change there, so you could kind of unset that if you wish. Um, but only it's only the border bottom where it really becomes an issue where you're using that. So um, I could comment it out. Um, temporarily, so I can show you how to comment in your code. So that's that line there, and I'm just going to kind of what you do is it's slash asterisk, and then you can see everything's gone green. So basically, everything after that is commented out, and then we do asterisk slash, and so everything in between that. It's now comment, so it basically skips it out. Basically, what you would do in your code when you add a comment is basically notes for yourself, or in a professional context, it is notes for someone else who might be updating the website because you might have worked on that project. But the next time the project gets updated, you might be working on another project. You might even be there with the company, so you leave note. It leaves notes for just general helpfulness of being nice. Right. The next thing we want to tinker with is changing our sweet little background to an image. Now you won't always want to do this 100% of the time, design wise visually, I think students get a little bit too caught up in going, oh it has to have an image just because I can do it, um, but no, it doesn't have to, you could just leave it plain white, it would be quite clean and quite tidy um, without having that, but anyway, let's get um, background pattern, will be fine for a search, obviously we want under images, um, that one there's relatively tidy. So we're not going to take that because it's a preview. We want um, to view the actual image and then take the original source file. And the really important thing now when we get this to file save as is I want to go and make sure that I locate the, the correct location. 
So if I look in here, I can see it's in my C drive under DGD, DPC, recording, web tutorial, and then obviously styles.css is the name of the file. So in here I'm in that, that, recording, web tutorial, and then I'm in images. So the code is there for the CSS stuff, but I want to keep all my images saved in the images folder because it's just kind of good organizing. Now the next thing is do not leave it the default name. I mean I have to type that name in whenever I want to use this image, which is ridiculous. But I could shorten it down to BG, being short for background. And it's a JPEG. So just that's a good thing to note. So when you start coding that you can remember the file type there. Just go back and find it. Right, so we have background image URL as into like an address to locate the image. Um, that's inside speech mark. So that's a completed format. Now you just need to locate the image correctly. So it's under the images folder slash. That means go inside that folder. And I'll set with bg dot jpg. That's when we pull it up. I could put an e in there, but it wouldn't work. Generally speaking, it doesn't want the e in there. Occasionally, when something goes wrong and it doesn't work and you've done everything right and it's saved in the right place, try the e randomly. Like 10% of the time, it wants the e. I don't know why in those occasions it does, but it does. So we'll check it as standard first. And there you go. There you go, it's gone there. I don't know why that went purple. That's interesting. Um, maybe it's something I did. I'll have to go back and check, but it's neither here nor there. So I've got that. My black bar is starting to disappear. So what I can do is I could put a little bit of a border top bottom, just a white strip to help it pop, up, pop out and my image looks quite large like because the um, price is zoom out ok you can see that's when it zooms out so far it's, it's starting to tile and repeat so like that's about rough size so what I want to do is I want to get it so it's actually the whole patterns in there with this kind of lighter highlight in the middle um, so I'll put the website back to original size so I've got an obviously quite a large image which isn't a bad thing but we need to sort that out. So one of the easiest ones is um, background dash size, and I can try 100 percent by 100 percent. See what that does. New. Right, 100% by 100% is actually your X and your Y, so you're like, you're vertical up and down. I'll try just straight 100% to see how that goes. There you go, that's pretty tidy. So, um, what it's done is it's done 100% width, and then it's just automatically just done whatever, the left over. Um, so when I zoom it out, the background stays the same size, but the other content changes, which is pretty much what you're after. Um, okay. So that's that tidied up. Like I said, I was wanting this to have a strip. I kind of like strip or worse, but whatever. I might change that. Who knows? Uh, yeah, maybe. I haven't got a colour in there, so maybe that's the right about. So if I got colour. Um, and what was I doing? I was doing the nav border. So what I would do is I would go border, and that does every side. And I don't want every side. I want the top and the bottom and no left, right. But I'll just do this first. Um, I think it really thin, one pixel. I don't know. Do one point five. Solid. Solid. White. Go uh, forward dash left none, which gets rid of that one on the left. And obviously, just duplicate that line. Control D, by the way, it's hard to do my shortcut magic. And right to none. So there you go. Nice little strip through like that. Um, I mean, if I wanted to be less subtle, I wouldn't make it white. I could make it like light grey. And so the light, and then the second word has to be starts with a capital. And it's not light grey, it's light grey. Um, 
huge difference, eh? Really good. But it would probably not display a single color if I got that wrong. And if I really want to check if it's working, um, I could go under nav. It has a color there, light gray, and you can see it's ticked. When it's not working, it'll be crossed out like that. So if I put it in a nonsensical color, so if I change it to gray, say, I don't need lowercase now. There you go, that's a little bit more on cue. But next thing is I want to put a box to content, uh, to put my content in there so it all kind of sits middle rather than just randomly going wherever. Um, so that's in here. I need to put what I is called a section. In my section, sections by default want a heading as one of their standard formatting for when you check for coding accuracy. It's called validation, but nothing you guys need to really worry about year 10. Um, but when you when you do that, what will be one of the errors that pop up is that it doesn't have a, a level one heading. So I can say welcome because it is uh, front page, right? Um, Say that I won't say. Oh, I can say, it, but it's not going to do anything. So I haven't told my section to do anything. Let's give a few of those spaces because that's annoying me. Right. And right. So section. What am I going to tell my section? First of all, I want a background color of an RGBA. A being for alpha for transparency. So, I know because I'm a coding individual, I can remember that 255 is a default for white. If you do, because this is RGB, as in like red, green, blue. Um, then the last one for alpha, one would be 100% secret, I mean 100% solid. Zero would be invisible. So we want somewhere kind of in between ish. Um, so I'm going to go for 0.6. 0 0.7 because it just looks tidy. Right. Um, and now if I put that in there, it would show a little bit because it would it would do the little bit for where the, the, the heading is, the H1. Um, but essentially, I'd want it to be by default longer. So I'm going to do something called min height. Um, min height means that essentially what I can say is for every page, the minimum height it will be will be at least 350 pixels, but if I had a page that had more content that was longer than 350, so I had like a few pictures, it would then make the um, the section background would kind of, the section would actually just make itself longer, but as a default it will always be at least that long. Right, um, now the other thing is I want to, I'll centre it in a sec, I'll, we'll save it and we'll see it. And we'll see what we've got, and then we'll, I'll talk about centering it. So, right, that's what we've got. So it fills 100% of the width. I've got a welcome there that's kind of half disappearing, so I can sort that later. I imagine what's causing that is that I've put padding up at the top here, but this has kind of gone to the last bit of the content, which is obviously like just underneath these um, links up here. So if I put some margin to push it down, then that will sort that issue. So if I go margin top, so what I get 50 pixels. That's better. I probably want another additional 50. So okay, that's a nice amount of space, but it's too even. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting really fussy. Okay, um, I don't want it to be the 100% wide, the whole width, because what I'm wanting to avoid is this content being mushed up the side here. So, I can go with, I say, I don't know, 80%. The joys of 80% is, it means if I shrink my window, 80% is 
regardless of how wide the window is, it's just going to fill up everything. You can see under really fast, it's still it's picking up that background color red still, which is really awesome. But if anything, I'd get, I'd get rid of it or I'd leave it blank at the very least. Um, right. So I want to push this middle. So our margin pushes it down, and it doesn't add any background color. It doesn't pick up the background color. It just does spacing. So I need basically margin to be the same on both sides because then it would push it in the middle. So the way to do that is go margin auto. Now it'll apply auto to everything. So what I'm going to do is because I've got margin top and I want that 80%, I don't want it to be replaced with auto, I'm just going to shift it on the line above because what it does is it does margin auto um, everywhere. And then afterwards it'll do margin top and kind of overwrite the order that was done on top. Um, so because this, this is what cascading style sheet means, it basically reads it in order from top to bottom and it just applies it. So if I said background colour green, then background colour red, you would see the one I, I read last. That's all. Because it would just it would do the first one and do the second one and only one. Second one. There you go. Margin order. Done. Nice and tidy. Um, I didn't even need to put a display block on there, which is quite convenient. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to round the corners just because I can. Um, so to do that is order oops, dash radius and I'm going to put pixels just so it's a nice number. Right, there you go. Um, I can see that this welcome is all mushed up and I don't like the mushiness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to space it in and down. Um, so I know it's currently an H1. So if I go H1 and scroll it, oh there we go. H1 and I say I want to have a margin everywhere of something nice. I don't know, 15 pixels because it just seems to be magic up right now. Um, it's pushed in. See what's happening there. Uh, I think every time I add the ma margin, what it's going to do is it's going to kind of this is going to follow because margin doesn't show up. So what I'm going to do to my section to accommodate for any headings that start is some padding just on the top, which I will then give more ten pixels to. There you go. So it's set kind of nice. Um, this one here, margin. Oh, I'm just going to put 20 because it's just looking a bit too kind of close to the edge there. Save, save. There we go. And now I want that font to be that font. So an easy way to do that is let's go look for the font there. And Take those three lines and put them on my line down there. Yeah. There you go, welcome. I don't know if the white works to be fair. Does it work? So, um, I don't need to state black because black's the default colour, so I'll get rid of that. There you go. Okay, so. That will cover the last bit. Um, oh, we'll just chuck in some text quickly, because we can. Um, so to chuck in text, essentially, what I'll do is I'll put it in the paragraph, and then I'm just going to go to the funky little site that puts in. Um, it's, in it's a random text generator. Um, this is used by professionals in the industry when they're doing like magazine or web layouts and essentially no, oh, I'm going to have this layout and it's going to have five paragraphs though. Um, but I, I can't be, I don't know what the text is yet, they haven't supplied me the actual correct text but I want to do the layout and not have it look like random want on keys, I actually want to look like words even if the words are nonsensical. So that's what the room Ibsen is about and what it's for. I'm just going to do that because I really enjoy scrolling sideways, not really, so I'm just going to say everything from there. Just 
unwanted. Right, okay, so. Be start, be finish. Got a text in there saying. Yeah. Then, there's my text. So my P doesn't have any um, margin on it. So I will suss that. So what I'll say then is. Um, everywhere of oh, 20 pixels, fine, there you go, that's tidy, uh, font, don't want that, so, um, font dash, bam, I guess that's the one, I suspect that is highly wrong, judging by the full length of the top, I would say it looks like this. Enthusiastic. Uh, I think it's cursed. We'll find out shortly. Okay, that's alright, actually, because it's not really a good way to do it. So I'm going to say Google. Do a proper century gothic, but it will give you this diac gothic is the closest thing it does to an equivalent of century gothic. And if anyone's had me as a teacher before, knows that I'm a little bit biased towards the century gothic, so I will use that right. Okay, it's the preview, that's nice. Um, fine, do this, and then we'll go to. Um, Excuse my typo. Right. Anyway, if you search, I can just put a search straight in for it. Right, so we're going to go quick use, so refresher. Right. I've got to import the font first. So I go straight to the top. I basically want to apply it to all text on my page bar anything I specify otherwise. So I just put it under HTML because that's the whole document. Yeah. Uh, there it is, like that. Okay, fantastic. 